Welcome back to Keys to Product Creation Success. And in this video, what we want to do is we're going to be talking about the 10 rules of internet marketing. And we call them rules because you want to understand where the context for your product fits. In other words, where, are, where does your marketing fit in terms of everything you could be doing to be successful in letting people know what it is that you have and in having them come back to what it is that you have to offer. Now, in, in these 10 rules, you're going to find that some of these things are going to be familiar to you. Some of these things are going to be the things that you've heard discussed in terms of uh, marketing funnels. They're going to be the things that you have heard in terms of marketing in general. However, you do want to understand the entire context for marketing. And these, these rules really apply to any product. So they apply to your information product. They apply to any software you're going to have created. They apply to, let's say you're doing things on Amazon. They apply to anything that you're looking to sell. If you are a multi-level marketer, they apply to what you're marketing uh, in terms of what your, your company is offering. Whatever it is that you're doing, these 10 rules are going to apply to, uh, to internet marketing and marketing in general. Now, the, the things what we're going to be talking about are, are, is a system. Right is what is the system of marketing for small independent businesses, and and these phrases are actually are not original to 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 this course. They're probably more original to Jay Abraham, who kind of coined these phrases, and then the person who really organized them and put them into a system that they were understandable was a gentleman named Richard Johnson, and he did a course, and he's done a system called the Hidden Marketing Assets uh, System, and that system is really uh, uh, Jay Abraham's uh, Jay Abraham's overview on marketing, where he really captured everything that a small business could possibly be doing to get the word out about their product and uh, and and whatever it is that they're offering. Michael Sinoff then took that program from Richard Johnson, the HMA program, and actually put it online and made it available uh, to marketers, in particular to consultants who are working with small business. Now, these are the principles uh, of all marketing systems that work on their own. So in other words, if, if you have the things that we're going to be talking about in this, in, this, in this system, you have everything that you could possibly have uh, working together in order to get the word out about your product. So you, 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 you want to have these things. Right, as many of these things uh, as you can working in a system. So in other words, no one aspect of marketing is going to do everything it can do to give you profit on what it is that you're selling. Right? And that, that's regardless of what it is that, that your, your product or service is. Now, the first, the first aspect that, that we want to talk about, you may have heard before, it's called unique selling proposition. And it basically means what is it that your product or your service, your brand does that someone cannot get elsewhere. So, so you should have for every product, uh, when you bring it to market, it should have something that people cannot get elsewhere. If it, it, and, and if it's going to sell quickly, right, if you want it to sell effectively, it should be something that someone wants. So your USP doesn't matter if it's something that's unique but no one wants what is unique right so uh, you need to have something that's unique to uh, the marketplace they can't get it any place else and it should be something that uh, people actually care about something that people want that's what unique selling proposition is the second thing is that you should have in any marketing system that you're putting together you should have upsells and cross sells so in other words Upsells and cross-sells allow your customer to enjoy what it is you're offering faster and, 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 and better. So in other words, what can you do to get your, your customer into your product or service faster? What can, they use, what can they do to enjoy it more? Or what else do they need in order to make it actually work extremely well? So if you think about it, uh, if you have, let's say, you, you, you buy a vacuum cleaner, um, one of the things that you might want to buy is an attachment, right? That allow you to that allow you to do uh, certain aspects of the carpet. Maybe you want to get an attachment that will allow you to do uh, your uh, your, uh, your 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 upholstery or your your uh, your living room furniture. So, in other words, what can you sell across 
and what what can you sell up so what will help them to enjoy it more and then what on what else can you sell to them that they might actually be able to do more with your product so upsells and cross sells you should always be able to have something that you can offer your customer at the point of sale that's what an upsell or cross sell is so you are actually giving them the opportunity to buy something that will make them uh, feel as if they're getting more value from their original purchase okay the third rule of internet marketing is list building so in other words you should be capturing your customers contact data so that you can contact them again um, you've already heard that the money is in the list uh, you need to be able to have a way of contacting people so that you can offer them more uh, so that you can offer them uh, let's say things that will give them more satisfaction and ultimately things that are going to make you more money list building is very important because it allows you to build a relationship with your customers marketing alliances so in other words what can you do with someone else who has a similar customer base but is not in competition with you now in internet marketing this is one of the phenomenal things about creating digital products is you can have people actually creating with you but uh, in, in uh, competition with you but willing to to uh, to promote your product right so there isn't a lot of competition in internet marketing even in uh, cases where you have uh, products that are in similar areas so if you were if you are a, a PLR creator right you can actually uh, promote other PLR creators because even if someone has two or three products on uh, let's say a LinkedIn uh, subject they could use all three of those products to create something that would be of value to them Right. So so in most cases in Internet marketing, there isn't a lot of competition. So having uh, alliances, having JVs uh, to work with you to promote your product to their uh, their list is a great way for you to be able to expand your customer base and for you to be able to have more to sell to more people. So alliances. And again, this you can do JVs and uh, and and uh, and affiliate relationships in any business relationship, in any in any business niche. Right? This is not just the online niche that you can do this in. Paid advertising. Right? That this is this is one way to scale your business. And in fact, it's very difficult to scale your business without doing some kind of paid advertising. So once you find out where your best conversions are and you have something that's working, it's time to start taking some of your profit and putting it into paid advertising so that you can actually buy right buy more sales are you paying out money in advertising fees yes but if you're clearing your advertising costs and making profit then you can do this again and again and again so in other words you are then only limited to what you can spend and if you can spend right from your profit you will then start to scale your business in a way that you could not do if you were just using free traffic and your own efforts Right, so paid advertising is a way and it's something that is necessary if you're going to get your business up to the point where it can it is maximizing its profit. Public relations. So in other words, what can you do so that the press is working for you? Right? And 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 in some cases you've probably seen where some people will have, you know, as seen on NBC or as seen on CBS, and that's that's a that's a small aspect of, of public relations but to actually be on television right even though uh, the internet has has consumed a lot of advertising dollars and attention there's nothing like being on television there's nothing like being interviewed on the news there's nothing like being featured on uh, in the uh, in the public eye in a newspaper in a magazine uh, there's nothing like it and it is something that if you can do it will will benefit not only your business but your product and your service Community marketing and education. So in other words, what you're doing in your local area and what you're doing to, to uh, educate people. Uh, some of what you need to be doing is educating people using webinars, right? And education basically means that you're giving people information. Now, again, most of what we do in marketing and information marketing is sales. So in other words, we're really uh, working on the pain points of people. But when I talk about education, I mean giving people information that's really going to help them to make good decisions. So you're so you you could be looking to twist it. Uh, into a sale but you are basically for the most part giving people solid information to make good decisions and of course the end of that decision is going to be your product or service right direct marketing and copywriting so this is where you're using the elements of direct response 
in order to get people to respond to you now to what it is you're offering. So, so, so the, 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 the most basic element of selling something, whether it's online, whether it is uh, through uh, direct mail, whether or not it's on television, through an infomercial, you, you want to have elements of direct marketing, direct response, and copywriting. That means you've got a headline. That means you've got, uh, you've, got, you've got the story. You've got scarcity. All those elements of copywriting. You want to make sure that those things are in operation in terms of selling your product or service. Content and publishing. So when you are a paid, when you are an author, right? When you can be an author, when you can be a, uh, when you can say that you're a best-selling author, you are are considered to be an expert on the subject. This will actually boost what it is that you're trying to sell. You increase the value of what it is that you're trying to sell. When someone else uh, verifies that you are an author and that you have written on something, our culture still values authors. Right, so so one of the things that that you can do in your niche or on the subject or in whatever it is you're selling is you can write a book, or have someone write a book, right, from your company. Okay, and then comes all the internet stuff, SEO and social media and all the things that we do to get traffic. So so these are all the things that we can be doing to market our product. All the internet stuff, you know, all the things that we do, and as you can see. You know, getting on social media and doing those things, that is a small part of what we can be doing to market our product. And these are all things that can be working together in a system of things that will make your product sell faster and will make your product sell to people that actually want it. Okay, so so these are the 10 things that, again, you want to build a system around. We could probably talk about each and every one of these things in an entire course to really break it down. But in this particular case, we want to take these things and use them in, our che- in a checklist for our product to consider, are there ways that we can exercise these 10 things in order to uh, maximize the marketing that we're doing on our product or our service? Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Welcome back to Keys to Product Creation Success. And in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, internet marketing product creation and the characteristics that all of your products should have. And we're going to be talking about what kind of things that, what, what are the elements of a successful product and what are the elements of a product that people love to buy even before they see it. Now, the first thing that you want to do when you are considering um, creating an information product is have you generated results in the area? This is the fastest way to be able to create an information product because you're going to be sharing with people how you got a certain result. And typically, this has to be a result that other people want. Maybe you got a bunch of traffic. Maybe you generated a lot of sales in a short period of time. Maybe you generated a short, a lot of sales in a particular aspect of internet marketing, CPA marketing, freelancing, affiliate marketing. And so you want to show people the results you got and how you got them. And people, when, you, when you're able to generate results, most of the copy that you're going to write will write itself because the copy is going to really be about the results that you got and how you're going to be able to show people how to get the same results. The fastest way to create an information product in internet marketing is to get a result. Get a result that other people want and then share that result with them. That is the way, the fastest and way that you can sell an information product that people are actually going to want and buy enthusiastically. And now these results need to be results that you can repeat. So in other words, this isn't a one-time thing because if you can't repeat the results, you can't teach other people how to do it in their own business and in their own life. So the results need to be repeatable and you need to be able to demonstrate that you repeat them and you're able to do this over and over again. Because again, if you can't do it over a second time, you can't very well explain to people how to do it. Your results need to be recorded. So and th- this is a little difficult. As you are going through some of the things that you're doing in internet marketing, one of the reasons that you should be considering a blog is that you should be recording your results because this is what you're going to use to go back and create your information product. So recorded results as you do them. And so you will be able to actually remember the steps that you're going to teach people. So you want to you want to you want to have a product that has results that you recorded as you were doing them. 
research. So in other words, you want to be able to tell people why your method worked. So you need to understand um, your, what you were doing. You need to understand the medium you're operating in. If you've, if you've been able to generate a certain success during blogging, do you understand why the traffic came to you? Do you understand why the monetization work? The research actually gives people the why. It makes it believable. It makes it, it, makes it palatable. It makes your, it, and, and in fact, it's really one of the elements of copywriting. Right, you know, social proof is great. In other words, social proof means that uh, other people were able to get this result. But 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 proof is, hey, this result works because it's scientific, right? It's it works because of these elements. That if 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 anyone tries these results and does them this way, it will work. So research is what you need. It will validate what it is that you were trying to sell. It will make your method believable relate right it, it needs to it needs to be relative in other words it should be your, your, your product should really uh, be something that that uh, that really uh, uh, touches on something that people are actually doing right so in other words it, it isn't something that's obscure it's something that is directly relatable to what they're doing so um, if you are using uh, if you're doing a method right it should be it should be um, uh, very relevant to people in a certain niche. If you're going to be talking about blogging, right, you want to make sure that your method is about blogging. It's going to get them results in blogging. So find a, 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 an area that you're getting results in, that you can repeat those results, that you've got them recorded, that you've done the research in it, in an area, right, that, that is relevant to people, right, to relevant to people who want to make money online. You can have results in any area. But if you can't sell those results, if people aren't interested in them, then you're not going to have a successful information product. Reviews. And this is where social proof came in. So in other words, you want to have people to either use your, use your method. You want to have them to use your product. You want to have them to take the steps that you've outlined. And you want them to be able to get the results you're getting or the results you're going to promise people or the results that you're going to show people how to get. Reviews are vital. Right? Reviews mean that someone has looked at what you're doing and they've said, hey, you know what, I, I, I can do that, I've done it. Right? And what this does is this helps you during the sales process so that normal people can take your method and they can actually improve their lives in some way. So you need to have some people who will give you testimonials. And these should be real testimonials, folks. Um, I know that, that today you could go out and you could get uh, testimonials from your affiliates. You could go out and get testimonials from, uh, you know, from other people like yourself. But the most powerful testimonials, uh, even if, even, now, the most powerful testimonials are always going to be people who've actually done what you're saying you're, you want them to do, even if people don't know who they are, right? When your testimonials are real, there is a character to them that you cannot get in any other way. Right. So get real reviews of people who have done your method, who have used your product, who have who have had success with what it is you're doing. And then uh, this is something that you're going to reproduce over and over again. When you cre when you once you've done through this, uh, it, it, an Internet marketer. Right. The only way that you generate uh, a successful uh, Internet marketing product is to produce the second one. Right. So so even if the second one isn't directly related to the first one, you, you will find that people will buy your first product. Uh, if 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 they if they didn't, if they missed your first product, they'll go back and buy it if they found your second one uh, before they saw anything else. Right. So the only way sometimes that you're going to get sales on the first product you create is get people to buy the second one. Sometimes the only way you're going to get people to buy your first and second product is to get them to see the third one. And so as you continue to create more products, you're going to reproduce this same pattern. Find something that people want to get results in and get results there. Repeat those results so that it's teachable. Record those results as you're going. Find out where, why you, you know, why your result, why you got the results you got. Research it. Okay. Make sure it's something relevant that people actually want to know and actually want to do. Get reviews. 
get people to actually get the same results and then reproduce it again over and over again and what you're gonna find is that your product creation method is going to generate results for you and income for you over and over again so those are the seven R's of internet product creation you have those elements you will typically be able to create a successful information product even if you have other elements that are lacking even if you have graphics that are lacking even if you have copy that is lacking even if you have a, a small list you can generate results and sell what you're basically sell people access to the results you're getting and you're teaching them how to get the same you can have a successful information product okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video welcome back to keys to product creation success and in this video we're going to be talking about the seven C's of content creation so you're going to be using content to drive traffic to your brand you're going to be using content to get people interested in what it is that you have to offer, whether or not it's on Facebook or social media. You do need to have something to share on social media, and that is going to be your content. Content is how people stay interested in what it is that you are going to be doing in your business, especially since you're creating information products. Now, the first aspect of content creation that you want to have in every piece, and this is whether or not you're going to be doing a podcast, a blog, uh, Google Hangouts, whatever you're doing in order to create content, if you're using all these things, you want to have an element of care. In other words, one of the things that you can do to have successful content creation is make sure that your content addresses people's real concerns. So you can talk about the things that you know, you can talk about things that you're finding out in the industry, but you want to have good content creation. Make sure that your findings address people's needs, their real concerns. Uh, if, if people are concerned about how they're going to get more traffic, then address those concerns. I mean, it's great to talk about, let's say, the Google algorithm, but how does the Google algorithm relate to people's need to get traffic? Always make the connection to the things that people care about. Always th make the connection to the things that people are concerned about in their business or in their life, depending on what it is that your niche is. Okay, the second C of content creation is that you need to be consistent. Okay, if you're going to blog, then you need to be blogging on a schedule. It's less important for you to blog every day than it is for you to blog on time. So if you're going to blog once a week then and you're going to uh, have a post ready for Mondays, every Monday at that time, make sure you have that post ready and then never miss a Monday. Right? It's important for you to be consistent. It's important for, for people to be able to know what to expect from you and for them to be able to get it. If you want people to pay attention to your content, you need to have a schedule and you need to stick to it. Right, So if you're not going to blog two times a week, don't say you're going to blog two times a week. Don't start out trying to blog two times a week. Try to do it once a week. If you're going to do a podcast, there's a gentleman whose name is John Lee Dumas, and he does the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast. And his, uh, his USP is that he blogs uh, or he does a podcast every day. Now, what most people don't know about what John Lee Dumas does is that he records all those podcasts on the same day. Right. So 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 remember, if you're if you're going to do something, ju just be consistent. It's more important for you to be consistent than for you to have lots of volume and be inconsistent. Right. To throw a bunch of blog posts on each other. A lot of them aren't going to get read if you don't have them done on a on a schedule on a consistent basis. Challenge. OK. So in other words, uh, do something challenging, challenge people, challenge the conventional wisdom. So your your uh, your your content is not going to get read if all it does is it repeats what everybody else reads. F find the most find the find the uh, the the issue that uh, that everybody's talking about, and guess what? If you put that issue in Google, you're going to find about a thousand copycat blogs who are all they're doing is rehashing what somebody else said and rehashing the stuff that somebody else thinks. Take a point of view, take a stand. And have a point where you are going to be talking about things from uh, that that challenges the uh, the conventional wisdom. Now, again, now you know you need to know what you're talking about, 
right? You need to, you need to not, don't just challenge and be controversial for the sake of being controversial. Uh, come from a, a point of view of knowledge, come from the point of view of experience, but certainly challenge the conventional wisdom in your content. Converse, and this is sort of connected to uh, what I'm talking about here. Um, you should be adding to the conversation, right? You shouldn't. You shouldn't be uh, uh, again just repeating or parroting what everyone else is saying, or you shouldn't even be talking about the things everybody else is talking about, right? When you, when you're when you're creating content and you're looking to get and you're looking to get customers, customers want to hear something they haven't heard before. So it kind of almost stands to reason you need to be discovering some things people have not discovered, right, in your business, right? Your job is not to, not to mirror what everybody else says. Your mirror is to create, is to innovate, and if you can do that in your content, you're going to be able to do that in your information products, okay? Now, <clears throat> connect, right? Now, you want to think about what medium you connect the most in. Okay, so so if you if you connect well in video, then use video a lot. If you connect well in in blogging, uh, do v blogging a lot. If you connect well in in uh, audio, where do you communicate best? Where are you making the most of your connection? Where are you making the most? Um, uh, where where are you getting the most traction from customers? You want to use that medium and to really reach out and really connect with people. Right at a really personal level, so choose the medium where you can do that best in, and use that medium to connect with your customers and with your prospects. Okay, collect. Okay, collect. So you should be collecting contact contact information. That goes without saying. Content creation without collection is meaningless. So if you're not getting people's names and email addresses that you can't contact them in order for them to buy something for you, you won't be creating content for long. Right. And this is one of the one of the issues with blogging. Right. If you're not collecting, if you if you're just doing it for, let's say, the love of the subject, that's great. You just can't do it for very long if you don't get any money. Right. So so you need to be collecting names, and email addresses so you can sell these people something. And I hate to put it so bluntly, but that is really the way it is. Right. You're you're creating content. You can drive people to what it is that you're doing that will help them. Don't cheat people by trying to teach them everything in your blog. Don't cheat people by trying to teach them everything you know in a podcast. That's not, that's not helping them, and it's certainly not going to help you help them. right? You need to make sure you give people your best, and the way you give people your best is you give them the opportunity to buy something where they then can, they then can get the, 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 the perspective that's really going to help them in a course in a piece of software or something that they can use on their own time. Okay, content, use your content to, to collect names and email addresses. Create. And this is very important, right? And, this, and it's, the last, it's the last C of content creation I really want to kind of talk to you about. And it is this. Remember, uh, people, in, in particular marketers, right? They're taking time they don't have to read something you put together, right? So this is time they don't have. And so make it worth their while. Be, otherwise, they won't be back, right? If somebody took 10 minutes out to read your article or to listen to your podcast, was it worth their time? Or is it something that you just kind of put together just because you had a, a scheduled time to do a podcast? Was it just you had it on the calendar so you had to do it? Create something, right? Make something. Take your time and do something that's going to be worth people coming back to again and again and again. This is vital because content that that really gets people to buy is is interesting, right? So so that means that in, I think it was Alice Mondozian who said a long time ago, and he might still say this: that if you want to be interesting, you have to be interested in something. Take time to show people that you are interested in your subject matter. Create something worth their time. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Welcome back to Keys of Product Creation Success. And in this video, we are going to talk about the 12 points of copywriting. 
And when you get ready to either have someone write your copy or you start to write it yourself, there are some things you're going to want to make sure that your copy has in them. And, of course, all these things are going to be adaptable to your product in terms of what it's going to be. But if you're just starting out, you want to use this as a checklist. If you have written your own copy, make sure that you have these elements. Now, the first point and the first thing that every, uh, every copywriter must have is that they must have a line in there to get attention. We call this the headline. And the headline is really something designed to grab the throat of your buyer and to really shake them and to really uh, shock them into paying attention. It says, look here, uh, take a look. You've got to pay attention because what we have to share with you is going to be vital. And so getting people's attention is what the headline is all about. Now, the, the next thing, of course, what you need to do, and some marketers call this the, the, the story or the explanation, but you know there, sh there needs to be a section in there where you identify the problem. And basically what you're trying to do with your customer is you're trying to let them know that you get them, right? You, you understand what they're going through. And what some marketers say is that if you can describe the customer's problem, you know, better than they can describe it themselves, then you'll have them. You'll have them in the copy. They'll be paying attention and they'll continue to move down the page. Now, the next thing you want to do at some point is you want to provide the solution. So what is it that they need? What is it that they um, are going to get? And this is where you will reveal that your problem, your product is the solution. Your product will really give them the ability to overcome that problem that you have identified, that you have described after you've talked about it in the headline. Now, the other thing you'll want to do is to present your credentials. And, you know, what makes you, uh, you know, what, what is it that gives you the right to define the solution to this problem? Is it that you've gone through the problem before? Is it that you've got experience um, in, in deciphering these things? Is it because you have uh, you've achieved some level of success in this area? <laughs> Present at this point your credentials and then what you want to do is start talking about the benefits what's the, what are the benefits of your solution and we're not talking about what your product has not even what it does we're talking about what it does for me right what does it do for me what what does it give me and we're not if, if you're if you're talking about the product in particular and you're talking about the the things that you know I get to do with it you're probably not talking about the benefit if you're talking about an area that you know is gonna have my life change in some way you're talking about the benefits so so think about things in the way of how they benefit not so much the features of the product you want to give uh, both proof and social proof now the difference between proof and social proof is that social proof is that other people have had some experience they have uh, had a, have experience with your product and they've been able to overcome that problem with it. Um, proof is that uh, you have research that your solution works, right? It's scientific. It is something that you know is almost guaranteed to work because uh, there because the process is something that really just basically solves the solution. You want to make an offer. So in other words, you want to make sure that you tell people. Right? You tell people what it is that you are going to give them. You tell people your value proposition. You show them what it is that they're getting um, in exchange for uh, what they're going to be paying you. What you have to do when you make your offer is you have to make the, the, uh, the, the, the value of the product as big as you can and the price as small as you can. Um, the, the other thing is you want to do is to make sure you're giving a guarantee. Right? What what are you guaranteeing? Thirty days, sixty days? Are you guaranteeing that they're going to have uh, absolute satisfaction, or you give them their money back? Um, you need to make sure you have a guarantee. You should inject scarcity. So, in other words, you want to make sure that the scarcity is either time based, or maybe the scarcity is quantity based. But in some way, shape, or form, they can't wait indefinitely to buy this product. They cannot. Uh, they cannot count on it being here uh, three weeks from now, four weeks from now, a week, a month from now. They need to buy now. Inject scarcity because um, you want to make sure that they know that that there's going to be a limitation. Call to action this is where you must tell them what to do. In other words, you must tell them to, to go to the buy button. You must tell them to click, to click to the next page. You must tell them to take action now, a call to action. And then you must also give a warning. And this really harkens back to scarcity. This says that if they don't act, 
right? It could be that they're going to remain the same that they're, they've, they've been before, that they're not going to get their problem solved. They're not going to overcome um, what it is that they really overcome. You have to give them a warning. And then you want to close with a reminder. You remind, their of the, remind them of the value they're getting for the money they're paying. Remind them of the benefits that they're going to receive. Now, when you, when you go through these 12 points, <clears throat> you'll notice that there is a link there to David Fry's 12-point uh, copywriting. This is the classic, uh, the classic system that marketers tend to use. Now, of course, they alter it uh, for their particular product, and you want to look at various sales letters to see how these 12 points are used, but you do want to make sure that these 12 points are in your copy. Okay, so uh, check out the link there uh, to David Fry's website and go over that 12 points. Use this again as a checklist so that your copy will be complete in terms of having all the elements that you need in order to convince your buyer that your product is what they need. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Keys to Product Creation Success. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the eight numbers that you must track as an internet marketer, in particular a product creator. Now, naturally, you are not necessarily tracking, you know, numbers that would uh, you associate with accounting in a traditional business. I mean, you don't have a brick and mortar business, and you don't have things like depreciation. But there are some minimal. There is a minimal number of. Uh, statistics that you need to keep track of in order to make good decisions about your product creation business. Now, one thing that you'll need, you'll want to keep track of, is the number of new subscribers you are getting and how much uh, you are and how often that you're getting them. You want to make sure that you understand where they're coming from. You want to make sure that you understand how well your uh, your opt-in, your squeeze pages are converting people, visitors, into new subscribers. So you should be keeping track of this number. Wherever those new subscribers are coming from, make sure that you understand um, the, 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 the number that you're getting on a daily basis, monthly basis, weekly basis, so that you can increase your activity in order to get more. The lifeblood of your business is going to be new subscribers who will want to buy your products and services. You want to keep track of the affiliates that made sales for you. Now, that means that when you know your affiliates have have uh, have requests and they have they have launches, the people that are really making sales for you, the people that are really going all out for you to make your product launch happen, who are basically bringing you leads by promoting your product, you want to make sure that you uh, do everything you can to help them to make more money. Right, so when they have a request, when they uh, when they want to uh, when they want to talk about things, when they need your help, make sure that you build relationships with the people that are making sales for you. Now, that doesn't mean that you know because a new marketer hasn't made sales for you that you don't talk to them at all. But the people that are making sales for you, you want to build relationships with them and keep track of them so that you know who it is that you are going to, let's say, speak to first. You want to make sure that you're talking to the people when you even think about your gun, think about having a launch. You want to make sure you're reaching out to the people who make sales. So keep track of those affiliates that are making sales for you. Keep track of the number of visitors to your site, in particular your sales page. This is your conversion rate. Now, often what people are going to do, they're going to send people to a bonus page first, but you want to keep track of how well your site is converting. Because if your site's not converting, you need to change the copy. Maybe you need to change something so that your, your affiliates can make more sales. But keep track of the number of visitors that are coming to your site and also the number of sales that you make. Now, it's not just enough to keep track of the amount of money you're making, number of sales you're making. You want to keep track of those numbers in context or, or, uh, or uh, in relation to the number of visitors to your site. Right? This is very important. This is where you're going to be determining what your conversion rate is. Keep track of the number of people who are opening your emails. This is where you are going to determine whether or not uh, your email copy is working, right? Because if, if you're getting new subscribers, but your emails are turning people off, you need to change the way you write emails, right? So keep track of the number of email opens you're getting. Keep track of them in relation to the number of, uh, number of people that are subscribing to your list. It's a percentage you want to keep track of. Keep track of the number of people who are clicking through. Once again, it is an indication of your email copy. 
right? Or maybe it is, an, it is an indication of the offers that you are picking, or it is an indication of the kind of products you are creating. If you can't get people interested enough to click your links, um, you're going to make a minimal amount of money. Keep track of these things. The earnings per click. So in other words, how much money are you making every time somebody clicks a link? This is an indication, again, of how good your offer is. It's an indication of how, <coughs> how well you are doing in terms of getting the right traffic in front of your offer. So, so earnings per click is going to be very important. It's also going to be very important to your affiliates. Uh, they want to know that you're getting a high earnings per click. Now, of course, there there are ways that you can you can control that number that that you can you can you can lessen the impact if you're having a having a bad sale. But at the at the end of the day, affiliates want to know that if they send traffic to you, it's going to convert, right? And we've already talked about conversion rates, the number of sales you know, per visitors that you're going to be getting. And then, of course, um, keep track of the money that you're spending out of pocket on a particular launch. That impacts how much, I mean, if you're, if you're spending a number, a, 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 a certain amount, you want to know how much that translates into new subscribers. How much does that translate into, let's say, if you're doing advertising for affiliates. Keep track of the total number that you're spending on the launch, right? Because you need to, when the profit number that you want to look at, is not just the uh, your advertising costs minus your uh, revenue. It really is the entire uh, 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 budget that you spent on the launch. Copywriter, right? Um, uh, maybe you have had graphics done. Okay, maybe you increased the capacity on your server. Maybe you went and bought images for the sales page. Keep track of the total dollar amount you're spending out of pocket. Did you hire someone to, to outsource your, uh, your support to? Total dollar amount is important because you want to understand how much it takes to get the number of sales you're going to get in a launch. Right? That's important. You have to because if you're, if you're, if you're spending more than you're making then you've got to do something different or you've got to increase the amount of sales you're getting for the money you're getting. And so you've got to be able to go back and track that number so that you can determine where you need to improve the numbers you're getting on the launch. Okay, so, so don't just be happy right, with, with making sales. Don't just be happy with making, let's say, enough sales that you can uh, that, that you can say you made a significant amount of money. Keep track of the money you're spending out of pocket. Right, and, and at some point, you want to increase your return on the investment you're making into a particular launch, right? As you as you progress as a marketer. Okay, so those are the eight numbers that you should be tracking: uh, the what and the why. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Keys to Product Creation Success. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the 10 potential WSO or product creation profit leaks. Now, in this, now what you want to do is you want to make sure that these 10 things uh, that you're that that you're going to see here, that you want to make sure that you close up these gaps. These are the kind of things that will cause you to leave money on the table. And whenever you do a launch, you want to close up as many of those gaps as you can. You can be satisfied with the overall number that you're getting, and that would be great. However, you want to make sure that that number is as high as it can be. And these are the things that are going to help you to be able to make sure that number is as high as it can be. Now, one of the things that you can do it, to increase the number of sales that your affiliates are going to make is to make sure to give them tools. That means to give them email swipes. That means to give them bonuses so that they don't have to go hunting for their own bonuses. That means to give them graphics. That means to give them banners. That means to give them the, the tools that they need to make money however they want to promote your product. So when you don't have those affiliate tools, the affiliates can send emails, but they're going to be limited in the number of ways that they can promote your product. You will see sales that come just as a result of having those tools available to affiliates. One of the ways that some marketers leave money on the table is that they don't have an upsell and or a downsell. Now, many marketers have an upsell or an, or an OTO or a first and second upsell. However, most marketers um, 
don't always necessarily have a down sell. And the down sell really is a way of giving your, your customer the opportunity of coming in at a level with price as an issue, right? Maybe they do want the upsell, they just can't afford it or they can't justify it. But you want to give them an option of being able to get your base package as well as an upsell at a reduced price. Now, of course, you don't want to give away uh, your upsell at a lower price. What you want to do is to make sure to maybe reduce it down to sort of the core elements and just give your buyer the core elements. You can even give your buyer the option of upgrading. But do make sure that you have an upsell, that you have uh, an, another way or a downsell, which is uh, a price at which your buyer can pay if they don't have the money for the upsell or they don't want to pay it. So make sure you have them both. No exit pop. So when your buyer leaves your page and they're, they're, they're not going to buy, are you giving them the opportunity to opt into your, your mailing list? And this is especially important if you're paying for traffic. Are you giving them the opportunity to, make, to, to, to get another offer? Are you getting them the opportunity to get deeper into your marketing funnel? And when you don't have an exit pop, you are leaving those visitors unattended and just allowing them to come to your page and leave. Don't do that. Give your buyers another opportunity to make a decision in order to benefit them and then also to buy more from you. And of course, uh, that leads to the case where you should be capturing leads. And in most cases, someone comes to your sales page, you want to make sure you're capturing the leads if they leave away. And even if they decide to linger, make sure you're capturing leads. If, you, if you're going, to, uh, if you're going to, to use a platform like JVZoo or Warrior Plus, there is a way for you to auto-capture leads when the, when the sale is made. So take every opportunity in the sales process to make sure that you're lead capturing. You don't know where the traffic is coming from. In some cases with uh, JVZoo, JVZoo actually has uh, a, a system that they call product of the day, as does Warrior Plus, and you can end up getting traffic that is not from your list. And so that traffic is going to be coming from someplace else. You want to make sure you're capturing the lead if they come to your page. Okay, no product insert inside of your bonuses. Now, sometimes you, what you can do is you can open up the zip files, right? And you can make sure that you have a product insert in there. Give your buyer the, another opportunity to see some of your other products and services. Maybe give them the opportunity to see an upsell. So you should have a PDF inside of your, of your bonuses with a clickable link so that your buyer can, again, get the opportunity to buy more from you. Okay, no additional offers on the download page. This is, this is really important. Um, when your buyer comes to actually uh, make the purchase, you should have all of your additional, at least your relevant additional products available to them so that they can see them, so that they can see the link, so they can make a decision. You should have a graphic and a link to your additional products on your download page. Um, th this, this is going to be vital because you are going to see residual sales when people are at their at their at their peak in terms of buying from you okay so give them that opportunity give them the opportunity to to experience more of the quality that you're offering okay no webinar with your with your upsell so in other words you're going to do an upsell and uh, you're going to give them additional uh, you're going to additional um, uh, 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 process but what you can do when the buyer actually buys you can auto register them onto a webinar and typically what you can do on that webinar is you give people the opportunity to get your upsell or even another upsell so so getting buyers on a webinar is again uh, something that you can do you can do it automatically and you can automate the process getting them on and then getting them into a new marketing funnel again another way for you to make profit without a lot of additional income since people are already getting into uh, get, getting into your product anyway no social media presence with viral posts so in other words once your buyer buys they need to get an opportunity to become part of your fan page an opportunity to connect with you on LinkedIn an opportunity to collect with you, connect with you on YouTube, right, and subscribe to you, so that when you begin to send them posts and send them uh, new videos, they should be sharing and and liking your stuff and sending it to their friends, right? It's viral traffic. It's a way for you to again really leverage when you get someone into uh, your your product funnel, right? So you should have a social media presence so that again people can share what it is that you are offering them. 
Okay, no retargeting on social media. So, you know, it's not enough, again, to, to just email and just say, well, they're just not going to buy. No, what you want to do is to make sure that you're take, and again, the cost is so minimal. Right, you you should be you should understand retargeting to the point where um, you should be retargeting your buyers, and and in some cases, some marketers say that the, the the retargeting list is even more valuable than your email list, right, or or at least as valuable. That if the money is in the list, it's certainly in the retargeting list. Okay, and then you know we talked about this before, and I, I want to segregate this one point that you know your affiliates are always going to be looking for bonuses to offer their customers. You should give them the bonuses. Don't make them search for them. Give them the opportunity. And now you're going to have to find some master resale rights. We have some we have some resources uh, at, in at the end of the course here. Make sure that you give your affiliates the bonuses so that they and and in most cases you can even create the page for them. So that all they have to do is put in their affiliate link so that they can maximize their uh, their promotion for you. Okay, so these were the 10 potential uh, profit leaks. You want to make sure these things are closed up so that you can get the maximum amount of profit in each launch. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Keys to Product Creation Success. Now, in this video, I'm going to be talking about five things to make your WSO or your product stand out. And this is going to be a little bit of a different video. It's going to be kind of brief, but uh, it's very important because marketers are always looking for a way to differentiate their product from the other ones on the same subject in the niche. And so these are going to be the things that you can be doing, and many of them you should be doing on a continual basis so that your product will always be unique and will always be valuable to your customer adding to the conversation instead of repeating what others are saying now the number one thing that you can do when you are creating products or even if the person you're having this outsource is to make sure that you are out doing outside reading and that can be difficult in a culture where most of us are really doing a lot with our within our 24 hours and there scarcely is time to do a lot of reading. And that's why most marketers do reading of blogs and do all of their reading online. Avoid that. Okay? You need to make time to read. And there are lots of times when you are either uh, in transit to on your way someplace. Maybe you're in your car. Maybe you're at the gym. Maybe you're on a bike. Maybe you are walking someplace. Take that opportunity to use something like audible.com and really do outside reading into theory and books. And not that theory and books really uh, are going to change what it is that you do and it's going to make you <clears throat> make you more effective as a marketer. What it's going to do is going to add to the body of the content. It's going to help you to make connections when you are actually doing your explanation or even when you're putting things together. So make sure that you are into doing outside reading, whether you're listening to it by audiobook, uh, many of you live in countries and in, in places where there are public libraries. You should have your own uh, library pass or card if that's what your country has uh, because this is a case where uh, many resources are available to us for free. You're not necessarily going to want to go out and buy every business book that's in the top 10 bestseller list. However, many of us can go to our public library, uh, get those books, and read them and benefit from them. There's a website called Business Insider, and this is really more of a popular blog uh, than anything else. But again, it does have interesting points from time to time. And then there is the, the mainstay, long-standing uh, Wall Street Journal. And, and uh, it has, it's going to have not necessarily marketing news, but it's going to have all the news about business that you need to know, things that you need to be aware of. Now, one thing that you're going to be able to do to make your to make your WSO stand out, to make it memorable, to make the customer experience one that other people are going to talk about is <clears throat> making sure that where your customer gets their product is as memorable as you can make it. Remember, when you are delivering a digital product, um, you're, you're not you don't have a store. OK, so the only the only memory that people have is when they get to your members area.
And so people like to be able to talk about a purchase they made. They like to be proud of the purchase they make. And so your members area should communicate that. Um, you want to do more than the basics. You want to make people feel good about their purchase. You want people to feel as if they're when they go here, they have a pleasant experience. It's important because it again, uh, again, not all marketers do it, and it's a way of, of getting your customer to feel as if when they get your product or they get a product from you, they're really getting something that's going to be high quality, high standard. And so you uh, are going to benefit from this when you're looking to sell a second and a third product because um, your products are always going to be perceived to be graphically designed, uh, organized well. And something that's going to benefit um, your 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 buyer in ways other than the content, right? The content you you expect that to be good, okay, as a buyer. But but go the extra mile and make sure that the members members area or the download page is organized, organized well, and it gives the the uh, the buyer a great experience. Make sure you have great support, even if you have to outsource it. Uh, get yourself a help desk. Uh, make sure that your customers and because and again, I realize you could probably keep track of support by email, right? That that's possible, uh, but but you are going to forget things. Um, you are going to miss emails. Email is going to go to spam. Um, you want to give customers a place where they can go and put their support request in. They know they're going to be taken care of. Respond promptly, right? When they have a support request, get in and do what is necessary to make sure that they're getting what they what they paid for, right? Quickly. Okay, unannounced bonus, and, and this is something that marketers do, um, uh, veteran marketers do, okay? Your customer should be surprised. Make sure you surprise your customer, <laughs> not with something bad. Make sure you surprise them with something good. Give them something in, in every product that you do. Make sure they get something they weren't expecting that's good, right? And make a big deal of it. Okay. Make sure that they 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 you know they see it on the sales page so it doesn't get lost, doesn't get buried. Um, again, this builds goodwill with your customer and makes you stand out. Again, positive uh, a positive element of customer experience. <clears throat> and then lastly, this is probably a little more common in products now, but again, um, it is one of those things that will make you stand out. Make a personal appearance. Let people get to know you. Let people see you. Now, obviously, you can't talk to all your customers personally, but you can get them on a webinar where you're introducing what it is that you have, where you're introducing who it is you are, where you're introducing um, you, you know, uh, what it is for you to be a marketer and giving them a product or service that's going to benefit them. Let them see you. Make a personal appearance in a webinar or teleseminar so that, again, people can make that personal connection with you the next time that you have a sale. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Keys to Product Creation Success. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the 17 resources you should have for a digital products business. Now, many marketers start out uh, on a shoestring budget and internet marketing is forgiving. You can create a product, you can actually generate cash because you can generate value for people without having to have a lot of fancy tools and without having to have lots of fancy fancy equipment. However, that does not mean that, mean that you need to stay there and it doesn't mean that you don't need to invest in your business. Uh, the, internet marketing is a business like any other and if you're gonna be in it for the long term and you wanna generate long term profits, you don't want to spend years using workarounds in your business. And so these are things that we're going to be talking about. They're things that you need to be looking to invest in. So one of the ways to think about this is that um, this list of things, um, if you don't have them at any particular time, take a portion of your profits every single time you have a product launch and invest in getting these things. Of course, you need to have your own domain name. Um, you can you can actually launch a product without having a domain, but you should have a domain name where you have um, all of your products, where you have a presence for your business. And typically, a domain name is probably only going to be ten dollars at most. Sometimes it might go up to as high as fifteen, but a domain name is pretty pretty affordable. Um, definitely, you might not have to start out with one, but you want to get one when you can. Of course, your website needs to have hosting. Uh, you want to make sure that domain is hosted on a place where you're paying for the hosting because you need to be in control of the hosting. 
If you're going to build a list, you need an autoresponder, something like AWeber or GetResponse or, or maybe another autoresponder of choice. This is what you will need to do in order to build a list without spamming people. Right? Um, you need to have a website. Right, so so what we're talking about when we talk about a website, most marketers use a website builder called WordPress because it is uh, it is flexible. Other marketers use other systems um, that are available to. It really is a personal choice, um, but you want to make sure you have something that you can get to and change, and that you can add to as your business uh, increases or or changes. Now this is going to be pretty important. And it's not going to be obvious at the outset, and it may not be something that you get right away, but you do need to have a way to deliver your product and, some, and a place to deliver your product from. Delivering your product from the same place where your site is hosted is not always going to be the wise thing. Sometimes you're going to have files that are going to have fairly large, uh, you know, they'll be fairly large in, in size. And you don't want to have your customer coming to your site where you have shared hosting <coughs> and then running into a case where they can't get the file, not because the file isn't available, but because um, your hosting isn't sufficient. Right, product delivery hosting or sites like uh, Amazon S3 and other sites where um, you don't pay a lot for the hosting, but your customer is only going to be going there when they want to get your product. You need to have a place where you can upload those products, especially ones where you're going to have software. You don't want want that process part of your process to fail. A delivery system, and this this basically means that um, you need to have a a way of being able to get your customer to either a members area or a place or a download page and it needs to be secure right so we talked about in the last section it needs to look good and it needs to be secure so that you know your customer can get your product but at the same time your product won't be floating around out on the black hat forums right so a delivery system is something that you need to invest in and again, you may not have to do that right away, uh, but you do need to invest in something, a, a membership site or, or a place. Um, the, a lot of marketers in the past use Rapid Action Profit. Some use sites like InstaBuilder or Wishlist Member or Digital Access Pass. But you do need to invest in a delivery system and you want to get one that's going to always work. <laughs> um, you know, th th there will always be lots of new products that come down the pike, but you want to make sure that you get the one that works, that is reliable, right? So even if you have to pay a little more and you don't pay a launch price, get one that, that's going to work when your customer goes to it. A video player. Um, uh, YouTube is a great uh, way to host your videos. However, um, as you as you move up in price, it's probably not necessarily going to always be appropriate for you to use YouTube. Sometimes you're going to want to use a player uh, where you're going to host the video and you're going to deliver that video through a video player. That's going to require some special third-party software. And again, <laughs> it's not something that you have to have to get started, but you do want to invest in it because, um, again, YouTube is free. And you are subject to whatever rule changes that they make. You want to be able to deliver video to your customers the way you want to. Okay? Um, you need a webinar or a broadcast system. Um, there are systems like Webinar Fusion Pro. And, uh, and, and you want to have these systems so that you can deliver a webinar at the point whenever you want to, again, to provide more value to your customer. You need video screen recording software like Camtasia. Okay, you, you, because um, you're going to need to make customer service videos. You're going to need to make create videos to show people how to move, navigate your site. You're going to need to make customer service. Uh, you're going to make need to make videos to sell things, right? And 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 screen capture software is pretty much a standard. It is is it's probably uh, should be closer to the top of the list uh, than 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 some of these other things because uh, you are going to need to create videos where you don't need to appear in it, but you need to communicate to your customer things that they need to know and they need to do that's happening on your computer screen. You need Camtasia. ScreenFlow is another one. Um, obviously, you can get some of the cheaper versions that do some of what these programs do, but in the long run, um, Camtasia or ScreenFlow, eventually, as a marketer, you are going to need it. An HTML editing program. So you need a you need a, a software. There are free programs available, like uh, um, nvu.com, Composer, 
Dreamweaver.com. All of those are HTML editors. Um, you can get a paid version such as Dreamweaver uh, with Adobe. But again, you do need to have one. And if, if the free versions don't do what you need them to do, you are going to have to upgrade to something like Dreamweaver. A graphics editor. So you, you, you need to be able to use something like Photoshop. That is the industry standard. However, um, there are substitute programs like Paint.net and GIMP until you can afford it. But eventually, I mean, if you're going to have someone working for you, you're going to put together more complex graphics. Photoshop is the standard uh, for a graphics editor. You need a, a mic. Right and a headset. So, uh, the, just standard practice for an internet marketer. Um, you 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 can get a USB mic. You can get a headset. Uh, it, it's really a preference. Um, if you're doing a lot of live broadcasting, sometimes you want to get a headset because of the latency involved with the USB. However, um, the newer that your computer system is, that latency is not going to be a problem with the USB mic. Right, so so make sure that you have a mic or a headset, and, and you really can't even record a course without them. So that's the minimum you are going to need to do. So you, you're probably going to need to have that even before you start recording your course. Um, don't use uh, don't use your computer's speaker uh, microphone, where you're you're not you don't have a controlled area to speak into. Don't use that to create a product. Make sure you get a microphone or a headset in the microphone. Um, when you you need a webcam and some lighting. Right, because you want to make a personal appearance in your video or in your webinar. Again, doesn't have to be there at the beginning, but again, you need to be able to make connections with your customer. And you can do that by making sure that you have a webcam. Many laptops kind of have it with have it coming uh, bundled. Right, so you're probably going to find that uh, that you're going to have that coming with your PC. If you don't, um, there are great laptop, uh, great uh, webcams available made by Logitech. Um, that have that that use minimal computer resources and then shoot in high definition. Okay, you're going to need high speed internet. Now again, I, I realize that you know that kind of goes without saying. Or the highest speed that you can possibly get. Um, you're going to need to upload things. You're going to need to download things. You're going to need to be able to do webinars. And the only way you're going to be able to do those things is for you to have the high speed internet. And so whatever you can pay for, as soon as you can afford it, you need to get it. Right now, that doesn't mean that you have to have uh, the most expensive just to have it. But the more that you're going to be doing, especially broadcasting, you want to have a fast upload speed. Okay, and we talked about screen capture software, pretty much the same thing as video screen recording software. And then you want to make sure um, that you have a PLR membership. And that is for the primary purpose for you to be able to get and deliver bonuses. So make sure you have a source of, of resale rights uh, content for you to be able to deliver unique content and software bonuses okay and then lastly uh, typically you're gonna need to have a graphic subscription um, of some kind in order to create uh, a good graphics for your products good graphics for your for your services and for the sales process <coughs> and even for your product design graphics are necessary and you can buy a graphic uh, subscription from places like iStock Photo those are places are gonna be fairly expensive you can get them a little more affordable at places like clipart.com and uh, and uh, graphicstock.com. Okay, so those are the 17 resources you should have for your digital products business. I realize that that was a lot. There are links in these in this video uh, for you to visit, so you can take a look at some of these things. But again, the way to look at this is if you don't have them. Um, look to make it part of your budget to invest in them as soon as you have the cash flow to be able to do it. Maybe do it one at a time as you do each particular launch. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Keys to Product Creation Success. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the tips for reselling a PLR course. Now, obviously, you have PLR to this course, and what you want to do is you want to resell it. So let's talk about some of the things that you'll need to think about as you resell a PLR course. Now, what you want to do in every case when you have PLR is you want to take it and make it unique in some way. Now, in some cases, some of you might be using the PLR to bolster a product that you already have, and that's a great way to use PLR. 
but you, some of you may want to take this course and then turn it into something that you want to be unique that you can put your stamp on it that you can make it yours and you can always do that by adding extras mind maps is a great way to do that sales videos giving your customer the opportunity to uh, to to sell the product G uh, doing uh, done for you webinars PDF guides always adding to the course um, in ways to make sure that you repurpose the content and for you to give the customer every possible medium that they might want or they might need in order to get a great experience so um, always make the course unique in some way uh, in terms of your offering give your course a USP and that's a one way to think about this what is it that you can add to a PLR course that people cannot get elsewhere now some of you are going to want to have a sales page created and it's going to be a good idea to have that sales page outsourced. Um, you want to make sure that the look and feel of the of the uh, of your of your page makes people want to buy and sometimes that is not necessarily going to run in the same uh, you know it's going to run in the same way that a person who actually creates a product can actually create the graphics to go with it there are people um, that you're going to be competing against who already have their pages outsourced you want to make sure that at the very least that your page is going to be what people expect and you can do that by either having that sales page design outsourced or you can use a page builder like optimize press Okay, you want to make your bonuses prominent on a squeeze page. So, in other words, when when your customer, uh, y you know, when, when your your customer actually comes to 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 get your product, make sure that they can get the bonuses, and make sure that they have a squeeze page where you can either opt in or they can make a decision about buying the product. Okay, make sure that when you uh, when you actually deliver the product to them. Um, th this kind of goes back to one of the points we made earlier about one of the profit leaks. Add more products on the download page. You know you didn't create this product, but that doesn't mean you can't have other products available. If you have other PLR products, get them up and running. Get them, get a buy button on them, and get links to them onto the download page. It is a way for you to generate extra, uh, extra cash on every uh, PLR launch or every product launch. Okay, and then provide unique bonuses, right? So, so don't provide the same bonuses that were given to you. Provide something that is again uniquely yours and that you know will matter to your uh, to your buyers. And of course, you want to change the title of the course if possible. So don't use the very same title as it was when you bought the PLR package. Uh, definitely change the title to something else. Change, you know, don't use the same domain. Um, change the look if possible. And again, this might not be. This might be beyond you. If you're not a graphics person or you don't want to outsource it, um, but certainly if you can outsource the type, outsource the graphics, and then change the title of the course. Okay. Uh, typically, a PLR product is going to come with source files, and you want to do that and make sure that you have your title, your stamp on that course. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello, and welcome to this video course, Keys to Product Creation Success. And in this course, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be uh, putting together what is for you a checklist of things that if you want to be considering throughout your WSO launch or even any uh, particular product creation launch it doesn't have to be a WSO now each video what you need to understand it could be a course all by itself so we are really giving you uh, an overview of internet marketing product creation and giving you something so that when you have completed your course or as you go throughout your course you want to start thinking about all of these things that we're going to be going through now many of these points right even even the individual points within the video itself they could probably take an hour all by itself to explain in depth so this is not a course that's going to be comprehensive in depth but it is very comprehensive in scope in fact you should then take this course in order to be successful um, things that you don't know and you don't know well do the research in order to learn more so now how do you take this course and get more success out of your launch or how do you take this success and become more successful in your business 
you want to make sure that you are paying attention to everything that we're talking about as you create a product. You want to consume this course and use it as a guide or checklist. These are things that if you leave them out of your course, you are going to have a less than successful course and, and a less than successful income, however you define it. Now, the other thing is that you want to start with these with the 10 rules we're going to be talking about. These are the 10 rules of internet marketing. You want to understand where your course fits in. Some people almost think that by creating a course, they're creating an entire business system. But you want to understand all of the business systems that work together in order for you to market your course if you want to if you want to make sure that you're maximizing your income from one product creation. We're going to be talking about the elements of top selling and fast selling products. So what can you do to make sure that your course is going to be fast selling? We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the content you use to drive traffic, whether or not you're blogging or you are, or you are, uh, you are using uh, podcasting or you are using video or you are using Hangouts or you are using webinars. What should you put into your content? What are the things that your content must do if you are going to be successful in using it to drive traffic to a particular offer? If you are going to have copyright, copywriting done for you or if you're going to be doing it yourself. What are the keys to writing good copy? What are the keys to mastering copywriting when you put something into a form of a product in order to sell? What are the eight key numbers that you must track in every product launch? What are the eight key numbers that you should be tracking in your internet marketing business? You want to be, you want to make sure that you know those things because these numbers are going to be key in understanding whether or not you're having a successful launch and what you need to do in order to fix it. What are the key 10 potential profit leaks? What are the things that if you can close these things up that you will keep your WSO or your launch from, from, from leaking profit to either other competitors or to things that you will uh, that, that are under your control. In other words, how can you close up every loophole so that you're keeping your customer engaged in order to make profit from every launch? How can you make your profits your product stand out? There are there are there are some key things that you can be doing to put into your product the things that will make your customer remember your product and be looking and anticipating what you're going to be putting out next. What are the resources that you must have or invest in or obtain in order to have a successful product launch again and again and again? When you start thinking about uh, um, uh, what you're making from a product launch, you want to start, start taking uh, some of what you're making to put it away to invest in the things that you must have. We're going to give you a list of the things that you should be putting into your budget so that as you uh, as you d generate profit, you reinvest that profit into these things so that you will be successful. And of course, each of these videos are designed to give you what you need in order to know that your course is maximizing profit. These really are key factors, key factors in making sure that your product is complete. Sometimes you can feel as if once you've completed the videos and you have a sales page up and you've got your buy button, you're ready to go. And certainly we don't necessarily have to shoot for perfection, but you do want to make sure at the very least that you're making every dime that you could be making. And that is what this course is going to do for you when you apply what you're learning and use this course, each video, each, uh, each video and each slide as a checklist. Okay, so with that, let's get into the course.